So joining us uh, next in the um, last session of the Connected Stack series is Mark Tihan from Confluent. Uh, he is the principal solution engineer there. He will be talking to us about REST the events, REST APIs for event-driven architecture. Thank you very Thank much. You, Mark. Thank you very much. Is it? Yeah. Uh, it's a pleasure okay, to be here. Yes. Uh, my name is Mark Tia. So I'm a principal engineer with uh, Confluent based here in Singapore. Um, I, I had the pleasure of attending API Days in Jakarta two years ago uh, when that was still possible. Um, and it's a real pleasure to be back here to talk about REST, uh, REST APIs today. So There we go. So uh, I'll be talking about REST APIs for event-driven architecture. Um, and this is fairly familiar ground, I think. I've, I've seen a, a number of other talks this afternoon, and they've been very, very good. Um, but we'll be taking this very much from a Kafka perspective today. Um, the uh, for Before we get into it, I just uh, one or two housekeeping things, I guess. Uh, um, we are seeking people to complete a survey if, you, if, uh, if you're keen to do that. There's a, a OVO vouchers up for uh, and anyone that completes a voucher. Either scan the barcode or look for surveymonkey slash confluent API days or visit our virtual booth. Um, so that would be very helpful for us if you could do that. Um, before we get into uh, talking about particular APIs, just a very quick recap on what Kafka is. Um, and a little bit about how Confluent re relates to Kafka. Kafka is a data processing platform. Right. It consists of a cluster of brokers. Writers write to that cluster, and readers read from that cluster. So that should be a, you know, a relatively familiar pattern for processing data. And it's a modern distributed platform for data streams. Um, uh, processing data on Apache Kafka is really about real-time streaming of data from the writers or the producers into a cluster of brokers, which are then consumed by the readers. Apache Kafka is an open source project. It's been around since uh, on the Apache Software Foundation since about 2011. So we're approaching sort of 10 years as, a, as an Apache project. And Confluent is a company founded by the founders of Apache Kafka when they uh, were engineers at LinkedIn uh, back in 2010, 2011. Um, so we're uh, like a six-year-old company or so. Um, and you, for, for those of you that are Confluent customers in Jakarta, you may know of Rana and Naveen and myself even, we visited Jakarta many times for, to, for our customers in Confluent. So um, Kafka is widely used as a uh, data streaming platform for lots of different types of organizations. Uh, frequently, this is for digital native organizations. It really was pioneered by the ride sharing companies uh, when they launched uh, around about 10 years ago. Um, food delivery, ride sharing, um, social media companies, and increasingly we're starting to see Kafka emerge as a major uh, data processing platform for banks, uh, particularly for mobile, mobile banking applications. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the different sorts of APIs for a Kafka system and, what, and, and the reasons that you will opt for using REST versus the uh, Kafka native. So, um, Kafka has a client, okay? And Kafka itself is written in Java and Scala, and that, that, so it, it, its native client is uh, the Java client. Most, uh, most organizations that write uh, applications that talk to, to Kafka write them using their Java framework. Spring is probably the, the most popular one. So uh, uh, Kafka has a thick client. You just uh, make it part of your application, and then you can start event streaming to the brokers. The data goes into topics which are somewhat similar to database tables. And similarly for consumers, consumers will consume usually using Java applications using the Kafka client. And this is using the native Kafka wire protocol. And this is what we would consider event streaming. Most applications fall into this category, um, um, but not all, right? Because what if you're using an application that's not developed using a Java framework, right? And you want to communicate via HTTP, and perhaps you want to communicate using request response. So the go-to uh, service for this is to use the Confluent REST proxy, which is a uh, community licensed service that runs on a VM or a pod or a container um, that basically translates request response calls into event streaming calls. It, it operates a number of producers and consumers and does that uh, translation of the protocols for you. And it's possible to write applications uh, that, that uh, communicate entirely via request response. 
Um, there are pros and cons to this, and we'll get into this in a little bit more. And we have some customers that, that uh, even though they, they do develop in Java and they're heavy users of Java frameworks, um, they have opted to use HTTP as the preferred protocol. There are other ways, of course, of streaming data in and out of Kafka systems. One of the most popular that we, that we see is to do change data capture from databases uh, using Kafka Connect, which, like REST Proxy, is another um, service that runs on its own VM, and it basically uh, translates from uh, other sorts of state stores uh, into event streaming protocol into Kafka Topics. So it's pretty common to uh, change data capture from Postgres or MySQL or uh, SQL Server uh, or Oracle. Indeed, we uh, Confluent just released a CTC uh, connector for Oracle two weeks ago, allowing you to basically mirror Oracle database tables into Kafka Topics. And every time there's an insert or an update into the database table, you'll have a produce uh, into the topic in Kafka. And you can then consume that as a microservice-based application. Um, and although this is one of the, uh, this is one of the, uh, it probably has the widest adoption or one of the most popular ways of getting data in and out of Kafka systems because you don't have to write uh, Java applications in order to use Kafka Connect. You simply submit jobs to do that. And Kafka Connect itself is uh, licensed under the Apache, uh, as the same as Apache Kafka under the Apache Software Foundation. And then the final type is really, how do you talk to legacy systems, okay? Uh, I don't mean legacy in a derogatory way here, but we're talking about systems that really have their own sort of framework. So SAP, my former employers, I mean, they have their own frameworks for middleware uh, and their own protocols. Uh, so, uh, you know, there is no Apache Kafka client for, for NetWeaver. Uh, and, you know, but it is still possible to talk to systems such as SAP, certainly using the HTTP sync, which allows you to use the Kafka Connect framework to stream uh, in and out of, uh, sorry, SAP objects in and out of Kafka topics, or you can use a REST proxy. And you could call that from, say, a NetWeaver application in order to uh, uh, use, uh, um, uh, for an SAP program to be a client to Apache Kafka. And then the final one here at the bottom is it is possible um, to uh, to communicate via REST directly with the Kafka brokers. So this is a recent release, uh, came out last year. We talk a little bit more about that. So the areas we we'll focus on for this talk, let's let's talk a little bit first about request response and how this compares with event streaming. Uh, then I'll take a quick look at the REST proxy because that tends to be the uh, the, the go-to service if you want to communicate via REST with your Kafka system. And then a quick look at the server options. Uh, so. Um, for both uh, self-managed and fully managed Kafka. Okay, so first one really is request response, okay? So uh, this is a very simple pattern where a client sends a request and waits for a response. It's usually quite low latency. Uh, it's usually synchronous, uh, generally point to point, and you're using a predefined API. All of this should be quite familiar at, a, at an API conference. Um, I personally tend to come across these as we find more and more organizations that are moving applications from sort of database-based applications using request response over to queue-based or Kafka-based systems with request response. Um, and this contrasts somewhat with event streaming, which is more really like the Kafka way. With Kafka, we, we decouple who writes the data from who reads the data. So a, a data writer or a producer sends the data into a topic, and they don't care if it's read by no consumers, by one consumer, or by 100 consumers. It doesn't matter, because we've decoupled the writer from the reader. And with event streaming, we're really looking at continuous processing. We're looking at a state where, um, where an event will trigger uh, related events within the Kafka system. So adding a new customer may trigger events for you know, requesting a bio photograph. It may request an event to set up a bank account. It may request an event to do an OTP notification. So uh, events trigger other events, uh, and this is very much the Kafka way. Um, you often see this for very general purpose events, uh, where uh, Kafka uses a central event streaming platform, uh, and, uh, and various event types are triggered. There are challenges with both of these approaches. Okay, uh, For HTTP, it's, it is difficult to enforce standards across these services, right? Um, the, the, the whole benefit of doing request response is you can, uh, you can pretty much set up your topology as you wish. Um, and uh, and this, this, is, this is great uh, if you have standards in place, um, perhaps some sort of service mesh or something, um, but it, it, can, it can become difficult to manage. It's also somewhat difficult to scale if the servers are synchronous. 
Um, we see a challenge around inter-service dependencies and just getting into the sort of um, spaghetti complexity that can happen for uh, unrelated services. Um, and uh, maintaining state uh, is also somewhat complex as you return state to requests and that has to be managed by each individual request. So particularly if you're building a system that has different uh, development team, uh, uh, disparate development teams that are, that are attempting to use the same system, this can become uh, somewhat of a challenge. On event streaming, the challenges largely are, are around um, the complexity of switching over to a full event streaming system, right? You have to start thinking really uh, about event thinking. Um, it's a somewhat glib uh, statement and, and you, you tend to see it a lot around Kafka, but you know, switching the way of thinking from request response to event streaming is quite difficult. Um, whether you're using something like CQRS or uh, uh, um, sort of domain-driven uh, responses, domain-driven design, once you've picked your methodology, you, you sort of have to you know, adopt that methodology fully for your applications. Um, Confluent write about this a lot for the different methodologies to use. Uh, uh, organizations like ThoughtWorks also uh, publish fr uh, frequently on this. But ultimately, it really is a question of adopting the Kafka way. Um, infrastructure can be complex in that it's a distributed system. It's certainly more complex than a queue-based system. Um, and But you can also have some complexity on the client side as you consider how you scale your applications. It's very common for banking, for banks that are using um, Kafka systems to have the ability to scale up their systems at month end. So, you know, as you have waves of data coming in around month end pay, payroll, etc., cetera, a system, a clients need to be able to scale and typically scaling from say one to four instances of a microservice up to about 32 instances is not that uncommon. So um, having the infrastructure in place to be able to do this level of scaling uh, is also somewhat of a challenge. So given both of these protocols, what are the, the, the different techniques that we can use? Um, but we're considering whether or not to go pure uh, HTTP, there are really three aspects. Let's look at it from the point of view of the management plane, the data plane, and some other reasons that may exist. I, I'm speeding up a little bit here, I'll just look at the time. So on the management plane, this is really uh, the sort of DevOps perspective. How am I going to manage my software releases, uh, access control, uh, um, upgrades, etc., for my platform? And, uh, you know, it's, it's topics, consumer groups, ACLs, etc. And ease of integration with uh, GitOps and DevOps platforms is definitely easier on HTTP, using HTTP calls than it would be for um, other frameworks. On the data plane, here we are producing and consuming messages to a topic in the same way that you would if you were using the Kafka client for the Java framework. Mobile applications are a very natural fit for this. Um, you know, use of web sockets, uh, use of server send events, etc., to send uh, events back to the browser. These these are uh, a good natural fit for request response. Uh, uh, legacy applications and use, use of sort of offbeat middleware. I tend to come across a lot of SAP uh, in Southeast Asia, and you know, there's important information in these systems. We want to know about uh, payroll and vendors and payments and POs and stuff like that. And we want to flow this data back into Apache Kafka so that we're able to trigger, build new microservice applications based on these. Um, and just as I said earlier, there's no Kafka client for ABAP, so uh, you have to use HTTP or REST. Uh, API gateways uh, also generally don't have very good native event streaming support, stuff like MuleSoft and Apigee and Kong. Um, and it's pretty common if you're using an API gateway to do some sort of monetization or uh, partner systems integration. And this can sometimes present a challenge. So similar to legacy apps, uh, HTTP may be the only uh, protocol that you have in common. And finally, other languages, right? So uh, COBOL and Erlang and Node.js and Rust. There are Kafka clients out there for some of them um, uh, with varying levels of support for those Kafka clients. Um, uh, so if you find that you're trying to, you want to adopt a language that has very poor support, then the best option is probably to just go ahead and use the HTTP. And finally, the other reasons are technology locking. There are some companies that have opted for pure HTTP calls and, and not have any dependencies on client-side libraries. Uh, for, for developing event streaming applications. Um, familiarity, if, you're, if you've already built a request response application that uses a different data store and you're switching over to Kafka, it's much easier to just use request response first with Kafka and think about switching over to event streaming at a later date. Uh, securing HTTP ports is easier than securing TCP ports, right? Um, you're you are largely sort of delegating the security out to the InfoSec team 
Uh, but you can do it via proxies and things, and it's an easier thing to manage than setting up security auth and access control for a TCP-based system. And if you're a purist on your domain-driven design, so so the, the design may dictate that you want to um, use HTTP REST for synchronous client-server calls. And then in cases where you want to have decoupling, and perhaps for, for a higher volume uh, produce and consume, you may want to use um, uh, event streaming. And so and using a service mesh, something like Istio can be useful in order to uh, merge both of these into a common architecture. So that was really the, the, the sort of covering of the, the reasons that you would consider uh, HTTP and REST versus event streaming. So let's have a quick look at the three, three of the different REST servers that are available on Confluent Platform. And I'll distinguish the different sort of usage licenses that you need in order to use these different services. So the first is a Confluent REST proxy. This is Confluent Community License. Anyone can go download it, use it on your production application, and there are no license implications to having it. Okay. Um, so it's a RESTful interface uh, for a, a Kafka cluster, uh, so you can produce and consume. And this is really tends to be the key thing that that um, that users adopt the Confluent REST proxy for um, is is really being able to to send messages to topics rather than being able to administer the cluster itself. Um, the management plane stuff is somewhat similar to as I described before. It's really how do I build workflows that can administer my software releases, my brokers, topics, consumer groups, and access control lists uh, using REST calls. And uh, data plane is really quite simple. I just want to produce and I want to consume to my topics. Um, Confluent Platform itself also has a REST API. Uh, now, this is part of the Confluent Platform uh, broker rather than, sorry, the Confluent Server broker, I should say, rather than the Apache Kafka broker. This was released last year with CP6. Um, it opened, it, so we're, we basically start up a HTTP REST port on the broker itself. So in addition to, to traditional port 9092, where you produce and consume to the brokers, there is a second port where you can uh, call the REST API. So the major functions are uh, uh, interacting with your brokers to describe, to list, and configure uh, the brokers themselves, uh, being able to create, delete, describe, list, and configure your topics. Um, so this means that, that you're able, you'd be able to build it into a customized Kafka client for your organization, where perhaps you want to do topic or schema provisioning uh, uh, via a, um, a user interface that you provide. Uh, this is fairly common, particularly with the larger digital native companies in the region. They tend to build uh, provisioning uh, interfaces for users to onboard to centralized Kafka systems. Um, be able to manage your consumer groups, access control lists, and also to be able to list partition reassignments. Uh, and similarly on Confluent Cloud, Confluent Cloud is the fully managed version of uh, Confluent Platform or Apache Kafka. So these are, uh, this is a system that runs on uh, a cloud native on any of the cloud providers. And um, it's a much easier interface to use an Apache Kafka system. There are no, you no longer have to be concerned about uh, VMs or brokers or zookeepers or storage or any of these sort of infrastructure level aspects of running an Apache Kafka system. Uh, it's available on GCP in Jakarta and uh, all three cloud providers in Singapore. And, and we, you basically just create clusters on your cloud provider of choice and in your region of choice. Um, and it's all fully provisioned and managed by Confluent. So we actually launched early access for a REST API for Confluent Cloud uh, just last week, in fact. Um, and as part of the early access program, we're also um, making it possible to interact with Confluent Cloud systems via REST. So uh, the first release in early access lets you manage connectors. Uh, so you can create or drop, say, a uh, CDC connector from Postgres into Kafka Topics, and then do a sync connector from those topics, say, out to S3, uh, and do this entirely via REST. So you could build a, a, a GitOps workflow to do all of this uh, without ever logging into a Cloud UI. Um, you can manage your users. So if you wanted to have automated onboarding and uh, de-onboarding of users for your Comfort Cloud system, that's possible. Same for service accounts for your microservices and managing environments. So Comfort Cloud has environments for test dev, prod, et cetera, or, or you name them and use them as you wish. It's pretty popular to create environments for sprints um, because you can just create and drop clusters much more easily uh, with a fully managed service than you that it's possible to do with a self-managed service. And we are working on adding more uh, uh, REST endpoints uh, in order to manage uh, topics, uh, which you know uh, a lot of users are, are waiting for, the ability to, 
to really extend um, uh, uh, sort of client onboarding for Kafka-based systems to fully to Confluent Cloud. Um, and that's really being, being able to move uh, away from having to manage any infrastructure for Kafka at all. Um, same for access control lists and consumer lag. Uh, the Cloud API is available on Confluent Cloud slash API slash docs. And uh, I never really talked about REST gateways. Uh, so please uh, have a look at my colleague Kai's blog post on API gateways, talking about Nilsoft, Apigee, Kong, et cetera, uh, for a deeper dive on that. And that wraps everything up. Um, for, for those that are around later, my colleague Naveen is having a workshop um, and uh, on uh, API. I, I, I do uh, thoroughly uh, recommend attendance to that. And, uh, that wraps everything up. As I say, I'm Mark Tian with uh, a conference in Singapore and quite happy to take any questions. Hi, Mark. Yeah, uh, that is a great session. Uh, there is one question from the audience. Um, it's on. Does Confluent has Apache Kafka, uh, Kafka connector for IBM AS400? So uh, yes, there are source connectors to let you connect to uh, AS400. It depends on the type of storage system on AS400. So if it's MQ, I would use the MQ source connector. If it is a DB2 database, you could use the JDBC source connector or IBM IITR uh, source. Um, or there are also some specialist vendors such as Attunity to let you do CDC. Um, the, the, the main difficulty tends to be if these are file-based, if it's a file-based system, VSAM or ISAM, running on DB2, then you really have to use something like Attunity or IBM. IID or if it's database based, I recommend using the JDBC source connector. Okay, it is DB2. DB2, uh, yeah, so you have two choices JDBC source, which will acquire data from DB2 tables using select statements, and every row in your table becomes a produced message into a topic. Um, and the second option uh, is to use a CDC tool from either IBM or from Attunity. A Confluent don't offer a CDC tool for a DB2 yet. Great, Mark. Uh, I think that's all. Uh, that is the only question that we got. Thanks a lot. It's always a pleasure to hear from uh, uh, Confluent team on different aspects of APIs. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this pleasure. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great conference.